Welcome to Forum 360, to our global outlook with a local view. I'm Leslie Unger, your host today. Although we have returned to the studio, today we come to you on Zoom because we have three very special guests from Northeast Ohio. Pre-COVID, wherever I would travel in the country or the world, when someone asked me where I was from, I would say Akron, Ohio, home of LeBron. Those of you that know LeBron's story know that his friends and his coaches and his mentors are very, very important to him. Today, we are honored to have three members of the Joyce family, which kind of starts the St. V dynasty as we talk about it today. All three are now basketball coaches. Coach Drew Joyce II just uh, received his sixth state basketball championship at St. V. His son, Drew the third, played for St. V, the University of Akron, played in basketball in Europe for 12 years, and is now an assistant coach at Cleveland State. And his son, Cam, is now head basketball coach at St. Ignatius in Cleveland. Welcome to all of you, although I do feel I need a shout out to the women in the Joyce family, mother, wife, and two sisters, so I give them a shout out um, as we get started. Welcome and thank you to all of you. I'm gonna start with Co Coach Joyce the second. Coach, you switched professions um, and have been amazingly successful. Six state championships. Do you have any advice for people that are thinking about making a switch or can you comment on at all about that switch that you made? Yes, uh, you know, it's a, a, a simple story of, of following your heart. Uh, as my life uh, transpired and I had spent 25 years in corporate America and enjoyed uh, what I was doing, but um, there were times uh, I've said more than once that when I used to pull up in my driveway in the evenings after work and I'd ask myself, what have you done today that really matters? And then Later that evening, I would get in the car with Drew and uh, five or six other guys, and we'd go to a practice, and uh, it felt like everything that I was doing at that time meant something. It was, uh, it was special, and I enjoyed it. So, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily the plan uh, to, uh, you know, walk away from uh, corporate America and, and do first-time uh, full-time coaching. Uh, but uh, there was an, uh, a time in the, uh, when um, the company I was working with uh, uh, was asking me to take a, a move uh, from an account in Pittsburgh to an account in Syracuse. And at that point, my heart just wasn't in it. And, uh, you know, I was, had fallen in love with the coaching and uh, coaching my sons. And uh, it was a leap of faith. And what was special is uh, my wife supported me and uh, we did this together. It wasn't, um, she understood, she, she uh, recognized that how important it was and uh, for all of us, cause she had been on that same journey uh, for, for the a number of years. This was when all this happened, Drew was now in college. So, uh, and Cameron was a freshman in high school when we made this decision. So uh, it, it was, you know, I guess you say a long time coming, but the, her support was crucial because I couldn't have done it without her uh, standing beside me because honestly, um, I didn't have an idea how I was going to earn a living at that point. I, I just wanted to do, I wanted to coach and, um, you know, we have been blessed to be able to build uh, a life around the basketball and build a business around the basketball. But uh, the only thing I would tell people is, uh, like someone told me, is, <laughs> yeah, you know, he said, you don't leave a job until you have another job already lined up. So, uh, but, uh, you know, we did it without having that other job lined up, but it was just, uh, uh, us following uh, our heart and what we loved. Now, I'm going to follow up with Drew the third. What role did your father being the coach play in you deciding to become a coach? Well, first, Leslie, I, I, I want to 
I want to, before I answer that question, give a shout out to not only my mom and sister, but the, the other woman in my life, uh, my wife um, and, and, and my three little ones, because uh, no different than the way my mom and my sister supported us. They support me um, on a day to day basis and they give me the motivation and, and encouragement to to chase after this this dream that, that I'm pursuing. And it's, it's not an easy thing um, that uh, they have to buy into with me, but they appreciate what I do and um, they allow me to, to be um, the best I, I can possibly be each and every day. But um, to answer your question, uh, the role my dad played was, uh, it was a, a major piece of why I'm into coaching. Um, I got to see him coach me and, and and my teammates and also my younger brother on on a daily basis. And not only did I get to see him a, as a coach, but I got to see him, you know, off the off the court. And he still carried that that same manner about him. Um, I got to see the interaction that he had with parents, the interaction that he had with players away from the court, and just those those conversations. And, and hearing other teammates, not just me and my brother, um, but hearing other teammates look at my dad as a, as a father figure to them and go to him for a- advice, it was bigger than wins and losses and, and championships. It was these lifelong relationships that, that you build. And that was always special to me. And, you know, I think uh, my dad unknowingly poured into my life of that I was a good leader, um, that um, I should pursue it. And he just placed me in a lot of situations um, that I didn't know would come back and serve lessons for me um, at this point in time. But he just, he put me in in, in different roles as, as, a, as a child, um, whether I was running running a, a practice for one of his teams or running a tournament or sitting in board meetings, all of these things gave me an awesome view, an awesome experience. And it, it just, I feel like it, it made me a well-rounded coach in the situation that I'm in. And I'm, I'm just, I'm blessed to be able to see it firsthand and witness these things firsthand. So um, he definitely played a major role um, in, into why I'm coaching today. Thank you. Now, Cam, I'm going to change up the question a little bit for you. Um, it seems like often um, the best players aren't necessarily don't go into coaching. Um, what would you say are three qualities that make a good coach a good coach? Um, you can't have an ego. That's one thing, right? Because players are going to make you happy and they're going to disappoint you. So you can't have an ego and think you know it all. You got to be willing to learn, um, but also willing to listen because every player in a situation is a lot different on a day-to-day basis. Um, I would say you got to obviously have leadership. You got to be able to not necessarily motivate guys, but you got to be able to lead guys especially young kids and a young men. You know, you're getting them ready for college, whether that's to play college basketball or maybe play another sport or just to be a student, you're getting them prepared for life. And then I would say the next thing would be, um, man, um, obviously you gotta, you gotta know the game. So you gotta, you gotta I mean, that makes a good coach, right? You gotta be, gotta be willing to study got to be willing to learn, you know, your craft, right? And so just as much as you want the kids to get in the gym and prepare and, you know, to get better, you should be trying to get better too. And that means studying the game, studying, you know, maybe your film from the previous season, maybe studying another coach or another team, going to clinics, going to camps. You got to be willing to sacrifice some of your time to help you grow in your career. So I think yeah. all those things are important. And, you know, just like Drew said, I want to give a shout out to my wife, Devin Joyce, who uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without her. So, um, but I think those are the three things for sure. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask you first, Cam, and then anyone else can weigh in on it. It seems like not only in basketball, but in, in so many professional sports that now coaches, it seems like they have to have played the game 
Whereas before they could be, you know, like five feet tall and coach. And now it seems like they have to have played the game. So at your levels with high school and college kids, is it important that, that you played the game? Um, is that important to players today? If I can go first, because <laughs> I'm, I'm the anomaly, because uh, I didn't play uh, organized basketball. I, I was a pickup basketball player like uh, most kids. I played football and ran track all the way through high school in my first year in college. But um, so I'm not that guy. Uh, but the one thing that, you know, and I tell people uh, about it is uh, the one thing is, uh, as Cameron said, I've become a student of the game. I, I spend that time uh, off the court learning, perfecting the craft. And then the, the other thing is um, I understand and know what my strength is. I, I tell people there's a whole bunch of coaches who knows who know knows X's and O's maybe better than me. But I'm, I, I know how to build a team. I know how to get guys to buy in, uh, to buy in and, and, and understand that they're, they're working towards something that's bigger than themselves. And so I think that that's a, that's a key and that's very, very important too. Um, yeah, it doesn't, there, there definitely is, uh, some space where you need to know the game. And I think that, uh, honestly, I say to my sons and I've said it many times to them and, uh, to others that they're going to be better coaches than me because they do know the game. So, uh, and they did play it at a high level all the way through college, both of them and drew into the professional level. So I think that there's going to weigh in. Uh, but um, I, I still don't want to, you know, have anyone think that just because you don't play, you can't be involved and you can't coach. You can, but you, it, it, it does take uh, a lot of work and, uh, and a willingness to learn uh, from a lot of different people. And I had that. Uh, Cameron Drew, do you want to weigh in on, on your advantages then of having played at a different level than your dad? Yeah, I'll weigh in, but I also will say um, sometimes because you've played the game, you may think you may be a little bit too overconfident in your ability when you're trying to coach a kid, thinking that they can do it. And you're maybe telling like a lot of coaches say, hey, play hard, play hard. But what if the kid doesn't know how to play hard? Right. And so it comes naturally because when the coach told you when you were playing, well, OK, that means I got to pick it up. Well, that kid may not understand that. And so how can I show this kid how to play hard? You know how a lot of kids don't know how to work themselves out. You may have known how to work yourself out in the gym by yourself as a player. So how can I give these kids a baseline or a template to show them? So I would say sometimes when you play the game, that can hinder you, but it can also help you a lot because it's certain little nuances that you just see that maybe others won't see. Certain things that you knew were hard to defend as a player because you guarded it. Certain things that you knew worked well offensively because you did it. And I think that's where that experience of playing comes into play when you're coaching the kid and they can see it and you can go out there and show it to them. And I think that's important as well. But, you know, just like my father said, it whether you play the game or you don't play the game, coaching is hard work. And when you get rewarded for it, you feel great about it, but you got to put the time in, you got to study the game. And you can be the greatest player ever, but that doesn't mean you're going to be the best coach ever. And so you don't want to get that lost. But playing definitely helps you for sure. Before I ask Drew the third to weigh in, I want to reintroduce today's topic. We are talking with the newest family dynasty in um, high school basketball coaching, and that is the Joyce family from Akron. And we have Drew the second, Drew the third, and, and Cam Joyce um, all with us today. So um, Drew the third, I'm going to ask you to quickly weigh in on, on the advantages of having played 12 years um, in Europe. Is, does that transfer to a college kid in Cleveland, Ohio? Um, it's a tool, right? And it could be used the wrong way or the right way. Um, no different than what my, how my dad and, and Cam weighed in on. You don't have to, to play this game in order to have success. It's what you, what you pour into the game. And there's so many layers to coaching. It's not was your experience on the floor. It's not drawing up a play all the time or, or just the X's and O's. It's, 
Can you motivate a team? Can can your words be fresh daily to a team? Do or do your are your words falling on deaf ears? Um, can you can you read the temperature in the room? You know, because there's days where those guys they just don't have it, or they may not be feeling a certain way. Did you even check in with the players before they came to practice and and seeing how their day was going or there's just a lot of layers that that go into it, and it's 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 managing personalities at times more than anything, right? Because you everyone is their own individual, and you're trying to get 15 or 15 plus individuals to come together for one common goal, um, and that may not have to do with anything with a skill set or X and O. So yes, does does playing. 12 years in Europe helped me. It does. I can talk about some certain things about the pro level um, because I've been through it uh, about college because I did it. But these guys are living out their own dream. So they, yeah, do they want to hear about some of the things I did? Yeah, maybe. But what's imo- the most important is is them because it's their dream that I'm trying to protect and their dream that I'm trying to to help them fulfill. So they're the they're the main character. Now, let me ask if I can ask each of you to answer in a sentence. There's a saying, I'm an executive coach. There's a saying I heard years ago that any coach does not have control over a, ta- a player's talent or discipline. I'd like to ask each of you to weigh in in a sentence. How much control do you have over a player's talent or discipline? Um, coach Joyce the second. Oh, wow. I think you have a lot of control if you build the relationship first. If you build the relationship and you know that the, 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 the player knows that you love them and you're for them, then you can, uh, you can uh, definitely have that effect. Okay, Cam. Talent or discipline? I would say more discipline because if you you have more control with their mindset and how they operate on a day to day, which if you help them as far as with the discipline part, the discipline goes in and helps them from a talent standpoint. So if you're able to pour in them how much they need to work hard and teach them the game, if they use that on a day to day basis, their talent will increase. And um, Coach Joyce, the third talent and discipline what things do you have control over what things don't you have control over right and you know both my dad and cam you know really really great answers i I wouldn't say the word control right i would use influence or impact and i think um no different than what my dad uh said earlier a relationship has to be built you know there has to be a two-way friendship for it to work to its best of ability. Um, you know, there has to be a bond and, and a certain certain love there. And and when you when you get that, then you can build on the discipline, then you can make that impact and and it rolls over, like like my brother said, it rolls over and 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 begins to to spill into that talent. I'm going to ask some different questions, and I'm going to pinpoint this time, and I'm going to ask for an answer in maybe a sentence, so we'll see how much I can get through. Um, Cam, best piece of advice you got, ever got from any coach? Um, <laughs> oh, wow, that's, a, that's tough. Um, I would say it comes from my father. Um coaching is a service and you're providing a service and how you choose to provide that service day to day is your choice. And you can negatively impact somebody or you can have a positive impact on someone. And that's what it's about. And Coach Joyce the second, what is a piece of advice that you remember that you now know in retrospect was a really good piece of advice you gave someone? Hmm. I think uh, it's, there's a saying, and they both of these guys have heard me use it many times. It's discipline, not just desire, that determines your destiny. And uh, I, I use that, and it's important. And I, 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 because I want kids to understand that 
the, there's there's some structured work involved in, in in achieving anything in life, and to have uh, a, you know a desire, a warm fuzzy about something that you want to do, that's not enough. You you have to have that will, and that that's the discipline. So uh, it's discipline, not just desire, that determines your destiny. And um, Coach Joyce the third, I want to ask you. How do you think you may be different after having lived in Europe for 12 years? Does that, has that affected how you look at this country, how you look at the world, how you look at players? You know, that's an experience few of us will ever have. How, how has that influenced you in some way that you th may think you would not have been influenced if you had not had that experience? Right. And... <laughs> When you said those 12 years, I almost felt foreign when I came back to the USA and lived here for the first time in 12 years. Um, but it is um, the impact that living in Europe made on, on me, and not only me, but my, my wife, uh, Lene, and, and two of my three kids got to experience it. It was, I mean, something that, that can't be bought. Uh, it was very impactful. It, it allowed me to see things from a different perspective. It allowed me to integrate myself in different cultures that I never thought I thought I would have the chance to. It wasn't just a vacation. I, I actually lived it. Um, Coach Joyce II, tell us something that would surprise us about the Joyce family dinners. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Years ago, uh, you know, those dinners, uh, uh, for a long time, we ate together, you know, and uh, they, it, and, you know, on the weekends, we still did. But uh, once they got to a age, it was all, hey, we were like, my wife and I were like taxi drivers. We were moving them here and there, taking them around. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it was, you know, it was always, uh, uh, exciting and something was going on someone had to be somewhere and and, and there were times when someone was uh, might have been left somewhere a, a little longer than they expected to be because uh, uh we're, we're you know trying to transport someone else someone another child somewhere else so uh, those were uh kind of fun it made it but it made it made for our, uh, a special uh life for us Cam, when you lived outside of the country, is there something that you missed besides family? Um, I didn't live outside the country, but I've been outside the country um, like four or five times. So, you know, I was in Italy with, with Kent State when I went there early in my college career. And I think what you missed the most is, I mean, like you said, outside of family is the food sometimes um sometimes you you know as, as good as the food is you, you're just used to food in america right and i think every now and then you just you want that chick-fil-a or you want you know your, your mom's cooking or your your wife's cooking or you know you just i think the food sometimes but that's you know drew had it way more than me i was only out of the country for you know weeks at a time at, at most I want to ask each one of you, and we have a minute to answer this. If you gave it a percentage to winning a game, what percentage is coaching and what percentage is personnel? I'm going to start, <laughs> Coach Joyce the second. Give me percentages. I say it's 90% personnel and 10% coaching. I think uh, at that point in the game, all we can do is maybe help them get past uh, uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, 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 somewhere where they're struggling in that moment. Um, Coach Joyce, the third, percentages. Coaching and personnel. Yeah, I would, I think my dad is right on. Um, you know, I would, I would linger around that 90 to, to 10%. Um, Definitely, it's definitely weighing heavy in the favor of personnel. They're, they're out there, right? The, the players are, are at that point, they're playing to their instincts, they're playing to their habits. Most of the coaches work has already been done before, right? We, we, we schedule practices um, in, in the right manner. 
we made we tried to make the the game adjustments and it, it belongs to the players. Cam, you have my last question. Skyway or Swenson's? Oh, this is Swenson's for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't ask me for that my answer on the, the previous question. Because I was thinking of something different, but I couldn't. So I'll go with Swenson's. <laughs> we were honored today with our guest, Coach Joyce the second from St. Vincent and St. Mary, Coach Joyce the third, uh, now at Cleveland State, and Cam Joyce now at head coach at St. Ignatius. It seems like just yesterday that we were reading and, and watching the Joyce boys play basketball from Germany and France and Michigan. They now live and coach in our corner of the world. Thank you to the Joyce family, the newest coaching dynasty, to Drew and Drew and Cam and the women in their lives who have supported them. I'm Leslie Unger. Thank you for joining us today on Forum 360 our global outlook with a local view. Thank you to all of you. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.